first levels in speedrunning suck. God, please don't do it. Pain. Yeah, there's no getting around that one. But you already know that if you speedrun yourself. It's the part of the run that you play the most, and for viewers watching the stream, it's at least half of the gameplay they see on screen. Some games have such a mundane opening stage that runners resetting a run dread having to go back to it, and often will end up finishing bad runs sometimes just to play the more fun stuff later in the game. If you really want to beat your PB and you're at the top end level of your speed game, you will inevitably have to reset a ton due to how optimized the game is. But with some games, you can't get away with any mistakes at all. This is where we enter what many will call reset hell, where early game standards have risen to crazy heights forcing you to reset if things don't go your way. Playing the same part of the game over and over again can really begin to test your patience until you start asking yourself if you're going crazy. Oh, man. Oh my god, guys, are we about to play Sunny again? Dude, I fucking love this level, actually. This level's so tight. Oh my god, I fucking love Sunny. Oh, I fucking love Sunny Flight. Oh, yeah, man, fucking Sunny Flight, dude. I fucking love this level. Oh, Sunny fucking Flight. Yes, dude, give me one fucking Sunny Flight, dude. Yeah. God, I fucking Sunny Flight, dude. Who here likes Sunny Flight, dude? Because I'm just a big fucking, fucking fan of this fuck flight, dude. Fuck yes, dude. God. Oh, man. Just about to, just every time I think about Sunny Flight, I just want to fucking mm, give it a little fucking Sunny Flight. Oh, Sunny Flight, dude. Look at these planes, man. They're so dope, man. Oh, my God. These planes are so crazy. <laughs> Gameplay is so crazy. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, man. And dude, tell me I'm going to speed run Sunny Flight. Sunny Flight. Seriously? Sunny Flight, dude. Let's go, Sunny Flight. Fuck, let's go, Sunny Flight. Oh my god! I mean, it's understandable that seeing the same boring ass level can make you go crazy, but I think a lot of it is partially our own fault. The strats utilized in speedrunning usually weigh on a scale, and what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have a really hard 4 second time saver in the first minute of the run. You'll cash in those 4 seconds if you nail the trick, but you'll lose the entire run if you fail it. If you're at world record contention, you'll probably go for it. Now if that same trick would be at the very end of a run with an hour and a half of length, the story would probably be way different. Not only do we take more risks in the early game, causing us to reset more, but we also get better and better at it because it's the part of the game we play the most when doing runs. This can cause a loop within the reset hell where you can be so focused on your early game that when you finally make it out, you have no fucking idea how to play the rest of the run out. This is why you gotta practice the mid and late game frequently so that you're always in shape for every part of the run. I see the reset hell syndrome happen to people that are maybe in their first year or two of speedrunning, they have a lot more patience than people who have been running for multiple years because they're newer, so they don't tend to mind all the resetting. But this ultimately leads to less finished runs and less defined mid and late games, however. The correct approach can be solved with a simple question that you should ask yourself if you find yourself stuck in the early game. The 5 or 10 seconds that I lost in the early game could have just as easily been lost in the late game, right? Well, for categories over an hour, I think it's safe to say that people will keep the run going if they lose 5 seconds at the very end, but are quick to hit the reset button if those same 5 happen at the start. I know it can be difficult to keep your mindset positive when starting out behind, but fighting against that urge to reset is what I ultimately think leads to success. By treating every portion of the run as equal, you'll find the willing wanting to pull the run back and eventually PB. Sometimes though, the early game isn't even a discussion of burnout, overplaying it, or wrong mentality. It just straight up sucks from the start. Arma 1. A lot of things being said about Arma 1. People watching seem to love this level. And on the surface, this level appears to be just fine. It has good music, good videos. Good missions. Yeah, it seems like a pretty good level overall. But, Homer 1 is hiding a terrible, terrible secret. It's heat. That's the terrible secret. Now let me explain why Homer 1 is actually shit, okay? Alright? Homer 1 is bad because any mistake you make in beginning is amplified so much in time loss than any other level. It's fucking terrible. Like if you hit a if you hit oh nice if you hit a wall in say Globex you lose like two seconds getting back up to top speed. If you hit a wall in Family Sedan you're like fucked for the rest of Homer One because you lose like five seconds. It's so dumb. 
I have done 17,000 attempts of Ouya NG Plus no quit exploit. And I have lost at least, at least 14 or 15,000 in the first five levels of the run. Early levels suck ass. <laughs> They're a reset trap. And you, and you get frustrated and tilted and you're like, please, for the love of God, if I can just get out of the early game, this will all be good. And then you're just waiting for a good run out of the early game and you, and your, your standards are through the roof. And then eventually you realize the only thing you have left to do is just lower your standards and accept shit runs <laughs> and then make it work. <laughs> Bad early games can usually be boiled down to two main categories. The boring early game, and the why does this have to be so goddamn hard, oh my god, I'm going to punch my monitor early game. On the boring aspect, you have stuff like Half-Life, where the first level, Anomalous Materials, is just a huge waiting point where you have to wait for scientists to stop talking. With the run now being 26 minutes, at least three of those minutes in the first level is waiting for scientist dialogue. This doesn't sound so bad on paper if it wasn't for the massive contrast that is the rest of the run. It's an impressive display of bunny hopping, damage boosting, and more, but there's no getting around that first level. You have to play it in order to get to the rest, and you reset a lot. Some runners have gotten so bored of the opening stage that they start tabbing out or doing other things during the downtime. Half-Life runner Maxim started learning one of the Star Wars Dark Forces games while waiting for the dialogue in the opening level to finish. Oh, and uh, this run was a world record. What the fuck? What is this time, dude? Super Mario Sunshine also suffers from unskippable cutscenes at the start of the run, and resulted in a heated debate on Twitter on whether or not you should begin the run from a fresh new game file, or from a file that's already collected one shine. The file with one shine would skip all the tedious cutscenes at the start, but would jump over the airstrip gameplay, which was a little iffy. Top runners have now started using a hacked file that skips all the cutscenes at the start, but still gets to play the airstrip stage. Good middle ground if you ask me, even if the game is modded. In the hard early game category, you have stuff like God of War. Being a former record holder of the game, I can tell you for certain it's one of the most painful first stages I've ever had to speedrun. The run length when I ran the game was around an hour and 20 minutes, and with the opening stage only being 4 minutes, you wouldn't think it's so bad, right? Yeah, this early game commits just about every felony imaginable when it comes to the unwritten rules of what makes a good early game. This isn't reset hell anymore, it's just straight up a torture chamber. From the second you start the run, you have to watch a 1 minute and 14 second unskippable cutscene. There's a fight immediately that you can mess up and lose time to if you don't do it right. For part 2 of the fight, you have to open a hatch in the ground. To open it safely, you need to grab one of the enemies, swing him around to knock everyone away from the hatch, run up to it, mash R2, and pray you don't get interrupted. Hydra 1 has some annoying text boxes that are hard to skip because skipping the text box and jumping are the same button. X. You can't just mash X because you'd be jumping, and the grounded attacks are way faster for this fight. Minor annoyance, but moving on. So Hydra 2 skip is where you have to open a door, stand on a chest, and hope that one of the harpies dive in towards you. You need to jump out of the room quickly enough and block mid-air when the harpy is diving in towards you. This trick has no visual cue, but if you have some serious spidey senses, you can react to the sound of the harpies screaming before they attack you. This rarely works first try and forces you back onto the chest for another attempt. When done correctly, you can now grab the clipped harpy and skip this whole section. This is followed by some planks you can easily fall off, especially this second one because the depth reception is painfully deceiving. Ah, would you look at that, another unskippable cutscene. Only 35 seconds this time, but Jesus Christ. After the cutscene, you're supposed to push a box onto the wall in the back so you can make it up onto the ledge but with a precise triangle launcher, you can barely make it. This was easily the hardest jump in the early game when I was a newbie and when I was first learning the game, but it's not as bad anymore. Getting it first try, however, is still not as common as you'd expect. For the final insult to injury, you have Hydra 3 skip. You first climb the ship's mast, then jump off the side. Then you have to try your very best to follow where the ropes meet and land on a tiny ass ledge at the bottom. You have to be extremely careful to not fall off, do a couple of out-of-bounds jumps behind the locked door, and finally, you're at the end of the opening level. 
The chances of all this stuff going right is pretty small. Every time I'd get past this level, I feel like I just won the lottery. I could be here all day going in-depth on games with bad early games, but I just want to quickly skim through a handful that I think are bad. Paper Mario has a 20 minute long prologue segment with not much going on except for cutscenes and basic combat. Ocarina of Time has a pretty long cutscene, which makes grinding shorter categories pretty bad. The enemies at the start of Silent Hill can either kill you right away or take several seconds, which is pretty ass. Super Metroid has what's called a moonfall literally half a second into the run. It's easy to miss and reset, and even when you do get it, the next two minutes of the run doesn't have much action. Jack 3 has a proxy off a of flagpole 10 seconds in, and is used in every category at top level. That doesn't work when you want it to. You want to get a good launch to deload all the training course tokens, but if you go too high, that's also a reset, and it's out of your control. Mirror's Edge has a brutal kickless chain at the start, as well as more difficult movement to follow for the rest of Prologue. So easy to make a mistake here. Donkey Kong Country Any% percent has a one frame wrong warp that you can do on the world map that you need to nail first try for world record by rubbing your SNES controller with the back side of a spoon? CFG spoon mashing strats. Regardless of how good the early game is in your desired speed game, I hope this video was at least relatable in some fashion. A boiling point of frustration when stuck in the early game is... I mean, we've all been there, man. It's all too familiar. To the viewers, I'm sorry you have to see the first level so much. And to the runners, hang in there. You'll get the run you really want. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to my patrons shown on screen for the support. Oh, and for the people that still want to watch my runs of Jack 3, Perfect Dark, and more, I've moved them over to a new channel I created a while ago called The Rixers Speed Archive. And yeah, take care, and have a good one.